section 3.11 linear digestion and differentials so let's say you have a function f of x equal to square root of x and you want to calculate the value of this function when x is 4.1 so that means we're looking for the value of the square root of 4.1 since 4.1 is not a you know square number uh, perfect square number so finding the square root of 4.1 one is not a uh, you know easy thing so what we can do is mm, so let's draw the graph of f of x which is the square root of x and at point 4 which is perfect square number which is very close to 4.1 if we draw a tangent line passing through that point then what we can do is you can see here at this point the value of x is 4 and the value of y is the square root of 4 which is 2 as you can see here since 4.1 is very close to 4 the value of the function which is uh, square root of 4.1 uh, can be approximated by the value of this tangent line at that point so can be approximated by this tangent line value of the tangent line at point 4.1 so the linearization this section it means instead of finding the value of the function at a difficult point like this we try to use a something you know uh, uh, something you know very a uh, close number like four here in this case such that finding the value of you know the tangent line at that point would be easier and we can use the that equation of tangent line to approximate the value of the function at that point in this case it's a 4.1 so finding the equation of tangent line is very easy we can use this formula y minus y1 equal m times x minus x1 and then we can bring this y1 to the right side so we can write down this uh, equation of tangent line like this since tangent line means it's a line so we can also name this uh, as a linearization linear function so that's why lx stands for linear value linearization and instead of just y1 or x1 if we want to generalize this value 4 by a then this y1 is the value of the original function at a plus m is the slope of the tangent line at a which is f prime of a times x minus a so this is what called linearization this is actually the value of this tangent line this is the equation of this tangent line okay so for our problem, since the derivative of uh, square root of x is 1 over 2 times square root of x, which we can find it by using um, a general power rule. And now we can find out all this value, f of a. Uh, in our case, it's a value of the function at 4, which is, uh, you know, 2. And then uh, f prime of a is uh, the value of this uh, derivative at when x is 4, which is 1 over 4. So by using this value, we can say that L of x equal, which is a linearization of this graph, uh, which is the equation of this tangent line, is 2 plus 1 fourth times x minus 4. So now a good thing about this linearization is we can find out the value of this linearization or this tangent line at point 4.1 very easily. Just replace this x by 4.1. And then if we just do this calculation, you can find out this uh, equal, you know, the value of this linear function at 4.1 is 2.25. Since we know that uh, the value of the function at 4.1 and then value of this tangent line at 4.1 is very, very, very close. Not exactly the same, but very, very close. So we can say, okay, the value of the function, which is square root of x at 4.1 is approximately 2.25. Okay. So that is very helpful. Using this linear function is very helpful. That's why this uh, section is called linearization. Now we're going to use that as a formula. So if f is differentiable at x equal to a, then approximating function l of x, which is the linearization of that function, can be written as f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a is the linearization of f at a which gives you uh, the approximate value of that function okay l is the standard linear approximation of f at a the point x equal to a is the center of the approximation so these are the you know uh, just uh, you know notation for uh, you know center and then the standard linear approximation let's see one more example 
we want to find out the linearization L of x of function cotangent x when x is 3 pi over 4. So for the linearization, we have to use this formula. So uh, if we use that formula, L of x equal f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So just plug the value of a in this case, f of x is cotangent of x. The derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant square x. The value of the function at 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. The value of the you know cosecant at 3 pi over 4 is square root of 2. But here we are looking for the square of that, so it would be 2. So now after plugging this value back in this formula, this is the linearization of cotangent of x when x is 3 pi over 4. So uh, there is another thing called differential. Differential. So let's say y equal f of x be a differentiable function. Then differential dx is an independent variable. The differential dy can be found by finding the derivative, which is basically, you know, you have y equal function of x. You just differentiate with respect to x both sides. It gives you uh, dy over dx equal f prime of x, which also can be written as dy equal f prime of x times dx. And that's called differentiable, differential. So this is the function we have given y equal sine times 3x square, and we would like to find out the dy. This is the formula. So make sure that f of x means uh, it's a sine 3x square. So when we try to find out the derivative of this function, we can use the chain rule. So that means the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of whatever we have inside here is 6x. So dy is f prime of x, which is this value, times dx. Okay, sometimes we might have to use this, uh, you know, change in y and change in x thing. For example, let's say there is a function f of x and then uh, there is a point, uh, let's say x equal to a. And at that point, the value of the function is f of a. And if we try to take some other point, very close point, a plus del x, del x means change in x. So by going from x equal to a to this point, the small change is del x. In that case, we can find out the change in y, which we denote it by del y. Del y is actually can be found by using this uh, graph, using the you know tangent line or equation of the line. And this is the formula we can use. When epsilon, which is very, very small number, goes to zero, the change in y can be approximated by you know derivative of the function at a times del of x. There is one example I'm going to uh, you know you know do uh, where we are going to find out the change uh, in a function uh, happens when change in the variable happens. For example, the diameter of a tree was 12 inch. So initially the diameter was uh, 12 inch. During the following years. Uh, the circumference increased 4 inch. So now, because tree, you know, the size of the tree can grow, so uh, initially it was 12 inch diameter, but now the circumference of that tree increased by 4 inch. Now our goal is to find out how much does the, did the tree's diameter increase? About how much did the tree's cross-sectional area change? So your tree could be look like this, but we're just focusing on this branch, you know, this kind of thing, which can be, you know, used as a, you know, a circular path only. So we're not talking about these leaves and then this, you know, upper body. So in this problem, initially, the, let's say D stands for the diameter of that part. D uh, was 12 inch. Now, after a year, for example, the circumference changed by 4 inch. So the meaning is, the change in circumference, which we can write down as a dc, which is a small change in circumference, is 4 inch. Now, what happens to the change in diameter? That's what we, we want to find out. Here, we are using this d, you know, like the differential here, dy or dx means change in y, small change in y and a small change in x. So, in this case, we would like to find out what is uh, dd, which is a small change in diameter. We know, you know, the circumference of this kind of uh, circle can be found by using this formula, which is 2 pi r, which is basically pi times d, because 2 r means d. So now, if you try to find out the change in c, which is derivative of c, uh, you can just find out the derivative of both sides. So change in c is equal to pi times change in diameter. 
So if you are interested to find the change in diameter, which is basically change in circumference divided by pi, if you divide both sides by pi, which is basically, you know, change in circumference is 4, and then if you just divide it by pi, it would be 4 over pi inch. So the unit of change in diameter should be inch. So if circumference changes by 4 inch, the diameter would change by 4, 4 over pi inch. So the second part of this problem says, what about the cross-sectional area? We know the cross-sectional area of this kind of uh, circle is pi r square. We can change this r square into diameter. Uh, so it would be d over 2, uh, radius is d over 2. So this is the formula for the cross-sectional area in terms of diameter. Now if we would like to find out the change in area, just differentiate both sides. So d of a, which is a small change in area, is actually pi over 4 times the derivative of d square, which is 2 times d times dd, which is change in d. So it's now just plug the value of diameter 12 and then change in the diameter from previous uh, part, which is pi over 4 over pi. After plugging this value, we're going to get 24 inches square. So by changing circumference 4 inches, the area would change by 24 inches square.